citizens, we are back and I'm still in Lagos. The lovely, kind of lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you have us already. Right, no. The lovely Victoria Island. I am here with my guest for today, who is a an engineer, a cultural connoisseur, and a burgeoning author, which we're excited to hear about. He is Ozaratin Oswald Gobadia. <laughs> who is the EVP of GBH, Building Infrastructure and Technology Solutions, based here in Lagos. Hello, people. Maria. She's been practicing Welcome. my name. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's not a tongue twister, but it's a. It's a lovely name, actually. Where is it from? It's from Benin City. Benin City, yeah, okay. center of the country. Okay. So why don't we get started with our conversation? Uh, tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Well, as you said, my name is Osaritan Oswald Kubadia uh, from Benin City, Nigeria. I'm a doctor and engineer, uh, run an engineering firm here in Lagos. Uh, we do infrastructure, building solutions and uh, technology. Um, and I'm just passionate about you know, the Nigerian culture, well, African culture in general. Keep learning about different things about us all the time. It's just so enriching. Nice. So... As we already said, you're local here. Yeah. And so how did you how did you get here? Why and where 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 did you become local? So I guess we all we all have uh, semesters in New York, right? So yeah. go to school, end up in New York, yes. do the New York thing for a while, then you start taking these trips back home and you realize, wait a minute, you know, it's like you fall in love with uh, this girl you left a long time ago, so you fall in love again. Mm. Right. So I think on one trip I visited Nigeria and I, I just I just couldn't stop coming back to see her. Sure. And that led to me moving back to Nigeria. But now it's almost 15. It's about 15 years ago wow, now. Wow, yeah. yeah, that's a while. Yeah, so I remember fast. we used to run the streets to New York, party, sure did. all of that, all yeah. of that. And then you had a different life. Yeah. So you were in New York. Tell us about your New York um, professional experience and how that transitioned into what you're doing here. So, I mean, a lot of times I just look at New York, uh, the New York professional experience as uh, like I was in the grad program mm. because it was just an extension of, of university and most of the things I do now are things I did in New York, mm. right? So, in New York, I worked for, my last job in New York was for Goldman Sachs where I actually, you know, project manager in, in IT. And w- when I started my business in Nigeria, it was pretty much pushing those same solutions into this market. Sure. Right? But that was the, that was the opportunity, yeah. right? So, it's, it's long grown from that. But one of the funny things that actually cracks me up is that the very first job I had out of college is a big part of my business today. Okay. In the sense that I actually move, you know, technology and people, relocate them, mm-hmm. fix the infrastructure and mm-hmm. things like that. So that was part of the very first things I did when I graduated school in New York. So it's funny how it comes around. Right. So where did you go to school in New York? I didn't go to New York. Well, I did actually. I went to grad school. I went to Pace. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Downtown, Lower yeah. Manhattan. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. you did your undergrad where? In Delaware. Ah, yeah. yes, that's right. Yeah, I remember yeah. the Delaware yeah. story. Yeah. Right. Delaware. Right. 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 Okay. So you studied CS, I'm imagining. Well, that's why I said I'm a doctor engineer. Well, my grad degree is in CS, but my undergrad undergrad graduate degree is in biology. Biology. Yeah. Okay. But you're so you're a true scientist. Yes, yes, but I'm, I'm an adopted engineer. Okay, I get it. I get it. Yeah, you're adopted. We engineers, we adopt you. That's right. <laughs> and I belong to your tribe. Yes, welcome home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so you told us why and why the where for the most part. And right now I want to ask you one of my standard questions, which is what is your Google speak? So we want to hear what you hear. And it's a word or phrase or saying that it's a meaningful part of your local experience and why or how you came to value it as local speak. Hmm. So I, I get the question because there has to be one word that when you think of that word, it kind of sort of resonates, right? Sure. But I think one of the interesting and difficult parts about being an entrepreneur, ah, by the way, I did not say I was an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. I guess that was probably given. Yes. Um, <laughs> one of the things about being an entrepreneur in Nigeria, West Africa, Africa, is that there's not a lot of stability. There's a lot of change. There's a lot of volatility. Mm-hmm. Adaptability. So you have to adapt very quickly. Yeah. So it's very difficult to find a word that can capture the, the day-to-day and, and the and, you know, and, and the span, the span, the span of time. So, but the recent word I hear a lot more people say, almost everybody is saying this word is, is I did manage. I did 
you manage. You know, you go, how you do it? You go, I didn't manage you. Right. And then you look at the person, you just come out of like a, a, a limo. Or, or <laughs> <laughs> you come out of the latest Benz that Mercedes Benz has not released yet. Right. And you say, bros, you're not managing. You know, look at, right. you look like you're doing a lot better than a manager. You got a lot more going on. You got a lot more going there. on. So that, that's been happening now. And I kind of like the word a bit because it, it, it has some graduation to it. Because I've now started telling people, I want to start directing. I don't want my name to get. I want to be director. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So exactly. that's the graduation, right? Right. So I'm not a manager. I'm not manager right. anymore. I want to be a director. Yeah. So that's yeah, the next yeah, level. Yeah. Yeah. As- aspiration always. Yeah. Always got to be aspiration. <laughs> that's what we live on in Nigeria. Um. But but I like that because it's um it's the shows humility mm-hmm. in a lot of ways and you know ultimately we can only do what we can do. Ah. Right. Hmm. So you heard the song now. I can't come and kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. Like, there's that essence. Someone sent me one of these memes that was, you know, it was what you thought uh-huh. it took to get ahead and yeah. what really it takes. Oh, yes. And so what you thought was this whole pie of hard work. Yeah. And then what it really takes is hard work, yeah. self-preservation, yeah. sleep, yep. playtime. Yep. So you have it's this whole self-care yeah. and and balance self-awareness is, yes self-awareness. yeah because those those components are different for different people exactly yeah. exactly yeah. so you just because this person does yoga it might not be what you need right so but there is something that is meaningful to you you may just need scotch with one ice cube in there you go and maybe your yoga exactly <laughs> exactly cheers to that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes indeed okay so let's talk more about gbh okay so gbh is a, a labor of love yeah Oh yeah, which I can, I can yeah. imagine. And so on your IG, I often see you posting um, images of buildings, yeah. being in buildings. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about what the technical aspects are, what your day to day is like. Okay, so uh, we managed to pull together a very unique company, DBH. Um, I often tell people that you know, in the world, it sounds a bit arrogant maybe, but I don't know. It's just, it's just a, it's, it's a, it's a, the way the company is put together because we're able to go from a very one end of the uh, spectrum to a very other end of the spectrum. Okay. So one end being this company can actually design your data center. Every single component of a data center migrates your old data center to your new data center. And right after that conversation ends, we can be talking about what color of couch do you want in your office. Okay. Right. So that's, that's a perfect end to end. Yeah. So, so we're yeah. really a turnkey company, right. right? So our ideal project is an empty space. Mm-hmm. You give us an empty space, give us the key to the space, and go, please turn this space into X, Y, and Z. That's where we get excited. That's where yes. our brilliance comes out, right? Yes. Yes. So we, we, we do a range of projects from building trading floors to building data centers to building just a regular office to building specific offices for specific tasks. Mm-hmm. That's what makes it unique because those skill sets are sometimes very far flung, but it's yes. the same individuals, right? right? They're discussing soft seating with you and also talking about the details of thermodynamics of your data center, cooling your data center, hot hours, cold hours. And the very next moment we're talking about, do you want blue or yellow couch? Sure. So that, that that's what makes it very different. We've been doing this for, we started this in 2008. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, we're going into year, well, 2007 really. So we're going into year 13. Okay. of doing other business. Uh, we're about uh, slightly over 40 people okay. there in the company. Um, so that's about it. Okay, nice. So what are some of the skill sets that you look for when you are um, attracting talent? It's, um, I think if you interview another entrepreneur in Nigeria or just anybody who's an employer of labor, they will tell you that one of the hardest parts is hiring. Yes. Hiring yes. and retention retention in the sense of retention of good people. Yes. Right. So you, you'll find that if you're trying to hire a marketing person, you're not necessarily per se looking for a marketing person who just did marketing for another company. You may find yourself just looking for someone who's really intelligent. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's more so you're more doing interview questions and test questions and, and just general interview pattern of just trying to figure out people who have a, you know thinking and maybe a flair. Okay. And then you can now capitalize on that. Sure. Oh, you're really talented young guy. You're interested in this. Okay, let's see how we can further right. develop it, right. right? Because there's just such, there's such a you know gap between what the education system is putting them through and what the realities of what the workforce requires. Particularly here, right? Yes. Right, right. So do, have you found yourself hiring more locally or have you been hiring people who are returnees like yourself? Well, it's a okay. supply and demand thing because 
there was a time where you couldn't really hire returnees because the number of returnees coming back to Nigeria wasn't that high. Right. Right. If you were coming back to Nigeria, you were coming back For at, a, a, at a very senior, senior level. Person, exactly. Right. So what's happened over the last few years that you now have more of a variety sure. of people coming back home. You know, mm-hmm. I was a junior staffer in XYZ company in the UK. I want to be home. And they just come home. So it now makes it possible for smaller companies um, to be able to hire a variety of people. Generally, we've been hiring local. Over the years, we've hired more local people than we have returnees. We hire, we train them, you know, we bring them to what we expect yes. uh, DBH staff to be able to do. Um, okay. Keep pushing. Good. So would you say that you've retained at least 50% of your, your staff? Oh, far more than 50%. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Far more than 50%. That's great. Yeah. That's great. That means... That your culture is something that the culture is culture is the only thing that keeps you know keep that can keep a company going. Yes. Right. So I actually got asked this question. Uh, I want to say yesterday, but it wasn't the day before yesterday, about you know setting standards and, and what makes menial menial labor. I say menial labor, but really blue collar labor. Right. Become attractive in an in an environment where you know doctor lawyer mm-hmm. is what people want to say they do. Sure. Right. So. That's where the answer to that question was more around the sense of culture, right? So if you want to identify with something they feel is going somewhere. Yeah. They want to identify with something that's aspirational, unique, and seems to be somewhat dominates the market, right? Something, you know, people want to aspire to something that's good, like mm-hmm. in better words. Mm-hmm. So I think people wouldn't mind being a plug or a wheel in an engine that is progressive and seems to be a very nice car. So you like to be a part of a... Porsche or a nice car right. then so 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 the culture is what makes that pulls that out together. Yes. So we find that our people enjoy the DBH people. Okay. Right? So yeah. they, they like the I mean they, I mean they don't have songs. I mean you go to a site and they're singing songs about the company. And you're like really? and you're all embarrassed because you know it's like, <laughs> okay, I'm not here, let me you know, let me No, you, you you have to learn the songs, my dear. Yeah, jump in, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Definitely. Yeah. That's great. That's awesome. I love that. Okay. So here's another question that I like to ask. What do you think prepared you to be successful as you transition? Like personally, professionally, what, what do you think prepared you for that? I would say that it's um, there's big components, right? So one of them would be uh, just toolkit, right? So the realization that every single experience is preparing you for something you don't know what that is going to be. Mm-hmm. So you just sort of live the experience take it, put it somewhere safe, and then I can guarantee that down the road, that experience becomes useful. Sure. So I have so many stories where I find myself, I mean, I'm in the midst of like, you know, this is hail and gunfire and fire coming out the ground is that much of a disaster. And I find myself with a little smirk on my face because I'm like, oh, this is October 2018, <laughs> I mean 2008. At the corner of this is exactly what happened. So it's just right. so so it just is. It, I find that has a big part to play in preparation, right? The fact that okay, I, okay, let me put it this way. So one of the things I tell young people now is, don't dismiss experiences and don't waste experiences. Right? So right now you're young, you're working your first job. You say, oh, this job is boring, but you have this much capacity. Why not bring that much capacity? to bear on that job and expand the role and use it as a testing place and learn so much more exactly. as opposed to just doing one right. and say, okay, I'm done. I was only asked to do one. Right. They're missing the opportunity to learn and expand because those are the years you can actually expand. By the time you get to our age, yeah. sorry, my age, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I take it our age, we're a yeah. bit, I mean, we, we tend to think we're still very elastic, but we're not, Yes. right? right. So I believe is the capacity you bring from when you're younger. Have you stayed up 24 hours and still be able to work you did it when you were 24. Mm-hmm. When you're 45, you know you can do it. Do you have to do it? Maybe not. Yeah. But if you really had to do it, you know how. Right, exactly. Yeah. And you know how to, to get from point A to point B. Exactly. And you, and you have experience yeah. on how you're going to feel about 12 a.m. Right. You have some sense, should I just take a quick nap here? You've, you've lived yes. it already. Yes. But if it's at 45, right, which is my next stage, yes. if it's 45, then you're going to first have your first all nighter, you're going to fail. Right, it's true. It's true. You're gonna fail. It's true. So yeah. I, I, I kind of apply that to almost every single little thing that I do. Yeah. And, I, and even yeah. today, I think even this is a good experience, right? I'm going to take this and put it right there. Right. And then right. one day, I'm, yeah. Right. Yeah. And exactly. one day I'm like asked to do an interview and I'm like, oh, I remember that day you did the podcast. 
you know, what did you do? <laughs> what was your nervous tics? You know, sure. and, and that's and that's one of the things. And then the other thing is just having faith. You know, I have faith in God and I have faith that things will work out and I just keep staying on my feet and pushing mm-hmm. through, right? And try to learn as much as I can. Reading yes. is important because you never know where you're going to pick up the answers. Right. Um, definitely lean on your previous experiences. Like I said a few minutes ago, I mean, some of the things I do today is things I did in my first job. It's like, yeah. you know, I in Nigeria right now, we're like the number one race for sellers. Like we put race floors in some of these buildings. Mm-hmm. And um, race floors are false floors, by the way. Yes, for, for yes. For buildings. For, for, of course, yeah, you're in Africa. Think, yeah. But for your listeners, they may not know. So. Yes, please tell them. Yeah, so most buildings you go in around the world, you're not really standing on the real floor. You're standing on a floor which allows cabling and air conditioning and cooling to go under. Mm-hmm. So we do that big in Nigeria. My very first project was... Mostly race floors. I dealt with race floors. So when I start selling here, I'm like, uh-huh. I've dealt with this. I know exactly. what you need to do to pick it up. You know, sure. So, sure. so no experience is wasted. Good, good, good. So speaking of reading, you are writing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not writing. I have written. Is you've that the right written. tense? Yes, you've yeah. written. Yeah. So, yeah, we've written a book. It's called In Pursuit. In Pursuit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. In Pursuit is Journeys of Entrepreneurship in Africa. Okay. Basically written by two authors. Mm-hmm basically telling the experience with stories about what it takes to build a business in West Africa, in Nigeria, in Africa, because okay. it's all the same issue. It is. Yeah. And um, so what inspired you? Of course, I mean, I can guess what inspired you, yeah. but what was that process like? Interviews or you know, how um, did you go about? It's, it's hilarious. It actually started as a joke. Oh. Right? So... Jokes on... <laughs> yeah, jokes on, jokes on, on somebody, somebody, for sure. Yeah. Maybe on the readers. Right. So, the, I mean, I, I think deep down I've always wanted to write a book mm-hmm. because I found that when the process started, I had been keeping notes mm-hmm. of things that I thought were important, of things that I thought would be interesting to you somewhere one day or tell somebody one day. I just had this thing on my phone and on Word where I typed up all these things and it helped start through the process. But the real joke was that, you know, when an election happens in Nigeria, there's a period of time and sometimes it's six months, sometimes it's five months, sometimes it's seven months, where nothing literally happens. Yes. So myself and my co-author, yes. Chuka Chukuma, yes. we both said, just, what are we going to do this next seven months? So we started writing a book. Can you imagine yeah. seven months? Yeah. It's true. It's yeah. similar, similar across the continent. Yeah. yeah. Just, so we, we started writing a book and now we're done. We're pretty much doing like the final art and design and okay. just a bit edit here and there. Like, you know, you Wonderful. find a common missing. Like, oh my God. How did that happen? I've looked at this 300 times. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yay. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm excited. So when, when can we expect that to hit the shelves and the, the internets ah. and the interwebs? I, that's the interesting part of this process, right? So it has been the most amazing process. I, it's one of those things where I thought, oh, we'll be done. Once we're done, we'll publish it and we're done. It's been a year now, mm. right? So mm-hmm. we started 2018. Oh, was it 2019? We started 2019. Uh, yeah, we started 2019. And it's been a year, and we think that we should be hitting the shelves in two months. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. So we've, we've, missed, we've missed our own deadlines a couple of times, but I, I've now learned from other people who have done this before. I mean, somebody told me, like, come on. Yeah. I have a book, a book that's in two years. Exactly. Yeah. For, so, I, so we're basically, as we say in Nigeria, JJCs, right? So we're, we're just new to the process, and we're learning the mm-hmm. process and all the things. And we're doing it ourselves. We're self-publishing. Okay, self-publishing. Okay. So that's making it even more interesting because right. it's a learning curve yes. and the desire to get it right. But then once again, I find that a lot of the skills that we use in other things mm-hmm. has not come to play in an area that we have absolutely no idea mm-hmm. about because mm-hmm. it's the same things you're reading, you're asking questions. Mm-hmm. You're trying to learn it. You're asking the right questions. You you know to learn the process so you, you get it right. Yeah, so yeah. fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And to that point, I find that there's like a blueprint to processes, right? And it's the yeah. scientific the scientific method is kind of that blueprint, right? Yeah. Because you, my engineering background has prepared me to do whatever, yeah. right? Just because I understand what the pieces are yeah. that need to be addressed and that type yeah. of thing. So I think we are speaking. Yeah. That yeah. Everything has a building block. Right. Exactly. Everything has building blocks. Yeah. So you, I, I, I mean, I say, I've been, I've been heard saying this several times when, it, especially when they talk about politics or try to fix the country, you know, I, I, I say to them, look, everything is problem. You just have to break it to the smaller, smaller building blocks, exactly. right? smaller pieces sure. and start figuring out how to solve each of the small pieces. When you look at the mass of it, Oh my God, I want to publish a book. You're just going to, you, you, you're not going to get anywhere. Right, you won't start. But if you look at the first step, which is paper. 
Yeah. <laughs> Pen. Right. Aha, let me first tackle that one. Exactly. Once you tackle that one, they say, okay, wait, okay, now need to make sure that this thing is English. Right, <laughs> right. So step by step, and before you're done, you know, you have a, you know, a book. Exactly. And then you know, all right, this book needs a cover. Aha, now let's design. So step by yes. step, and it gets done. And we're, we're far, pretty much close to the end. Okay, we'll look forward to that. And we'll put um, we'll put that down in the show notes and update the show notes so okay. that people can find it and, and find you. Awesome. So that's also segueing to a mindset hack question. Okay. So what's your favorite or an innovative mindset hack that you can't imagine or that exists that you know of? Oh, once again, I have to take it back to the fact that entrepreneurs have, I mean, I think just to survive, we, we probably hack our minds. Mm several times a day, mm. right? When you're dealing with a lot of volatility and stability, you, you, you have to find different ways to, um, to ensure that you can achieve the desired goal. So I think we're resetting our brains and minds every, getting ourselves hyped. I mean, one minute you are pretty much about to be the Pope and how religious you are about it. The next minute you're crossing your fingers and your toes, hoping for all kinds of luck. And yeah. next minute you're sitting there trying to figure out a scientific angle to get something done. Sure. But I think I think one thing that I think is common through common thread throughout my experiences, I'm very optimistic. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would say I'm I, I take very calculated risks. I believe in intentionality. Mm-hmm. So if I'm gonna be blue, I'm blue. Right? Mm-hmm. And that's something I'm really driving harder this year, right? So if I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna be this. Okay. And and I think when you make that decision it pushes you to calculate the risk involved with that decision, mm. right? Because you decided, I'm going to be blue. And then you, you have to calculate, okay, what does it mean when you go into the market as blue, right? right? So you now have to calculate that risk. And ultimately, once you have this sense of where you want to go and what you want to, how you're going to get there, right? It makes it harder for you to back down. Yes. Right? So, so I say all that to say that I just don't give up, right? So yeah. I'm pretty much... Yeah. You know, I, I can hear the worst of news about something I'm about to do, and I'm like, sure. my mind simply goes to, okay, that's good. How do I now push through that? The next, yeah. yeah. Which is, that's so powerful because, yeah, yeah but the nature of our markets is that. So you yeah. will always have to. When you said optimistic, I, I thought of, you can live <laughs> as long as you keep your head to the sky. sky. It's true. That's Be true. optimistic, but, yeah. But as yeah. long as you keep your feet on the ground. That too. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of these things are designed to knock you down. Yes. Right. Yeah, weeders. Yeah. Like, that's always the case. Yeah. Weeders, yeah. easy, all of that yeah. is to kind of, you know, pick out the best. Yeah. You know, so if you survive. if you go through things and you really stay standing, I'm still standing. Yeah. You know, you enter well, you can't keep your head in the sky if you're if your if your feet's not on the ground. There you go. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Okay, so we are getting to the end of the conversation. This Woo-hoo! has been so fun. Yeah. That was so quick. Let's do it again. I know, right? So one other question, and then I'll ask you for some, some closing thoughts. Um, okay. What are you listening to these days? Ah, that's interesting. You know, I started listening to podcasts. Oh, okay, yes. And I heard a few of them that I, that I loved, I enjoyed it, I and mean, I was hoping. I think I even got my sons hooked on it. Okay. It was this uh, business wars. Business wars. Interesting. Okay. But then I don't have the, I don't have the commute for it. Ah, right. You're, yeah. around, you're around the corner. Yeah. I yeah. don't have the commute for podcasts. Yeah. And I think I really, I think it's an excuse because I think I should do it on my flights and then I travel so much. Yeah. Right? I should listen to the plane. Yes. 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 But I do read. Okay. Right. So I always yes. have a book. Okay. Right. So I have, either I'm reading some kind of a business book and then try to squeeze in a fun book in the middle sure. and then read another business book. Sure. Although right now I got three business books back to back that okay. I have to what get through. What are the titles? So the, the one I just finished is Range. Range. Yeah. It's okay. a book about how we learn and okay. it just blows it all up. Like, okay, mm. you know, all this starting early and 10,000 hours, toss it. It's only good for like two things. No more tipping points. <laughs> it's interesting because Malcolm actually supports the book and the book actually kills some of Malcolm's theories. theories. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those theories weren't exactly Malcolm's. Malcolm just put it in the book. Sure. So sure. ten thousand hours and practice, practice, practice. Right. It's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. It's not for, it's not for everyone. It's not for everything. Yeah. Exactly. It's That's what this you. book says. Okay. So after reading, I'm like, oh my god, yeah, it's a very theoretical book, though. It kind of for me, I kind of went, I'm gonna read this book. No, God got through it. Oh really? Then now okay. I'm reading, talking to strangers. Oh, okay, that's a good one. Yeah, Malcolm yeah. Gladwell. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, I like how Malcolm writes. Yes. 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 I've, I've read everything. I mean, the only book Malcolm wrote that I don't like, I think, is uh, 
speaking to dogs or thinking like dogs or that book was rough. What the dog said. I didn't even know. I've never even seen that title. Yeah, it's a book called What the Dog Said. What it's, the dog said. It's the same as that range book. It's like, uh, struggle through it. Okay, okay. And then Blink was a bit like that too. Yeah. But Talking, Talking to Strangers is amazing. Range. Yeah. Very recommended. Then the book that I, I have not started reading yet, but I heard a bit of the um, audio is the Horowitz book. I can't remember the name. It's something about culture, who we are, what we are, or something like that. Horowitz. Horowitz, yeah. The Horowitz guy. Okay. He, um, He's a business partner to the, uh, I forget who's a business partner okay, to, but he's, well, he's a Silicon Valley guy. Sure, sure, sure. Well, we'll add that to the show notes as well. Yeah, we'll really good book. Title. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Sometimes I even blank on the right. authors, but I'm like, yeah, this book, just because you're consuming so much. It's so. not my own book. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying, but we just want the content. He's not my cousin. Content, right? <laughs> <laughs> when you start to get your family members name, then it's a problem. Yeah, it's but some guy in Silicon Valley wrote a book. Yeah. I'm 45 this year. I can forget his name all I want. Right, all right. Oh, my dear, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much. Do you have any closing thoughts for us? Uh, not really. Just, you know, this was fun. I had a good time. Okay. It went pretty quickly. How long was that? We're almost at the 20. We're just past the 20. Oh, okay. Minute mark. Okay. Yeah. No, that's not bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we could talk for longer, but I know the, the, the knock at yeah, the door. Yeah, you hear my coach trying to get me, yeah. right? <laughs> Time for you to go. Exactly. People, so I, people are trying to move me around. I like it. Yeah, exactly. I always try to be mindful of my So, I, I, all I can say is, you know, it's fun talking about experiences. Um, yeah. Look out for the book in pursuit. Yes. I think it's going to make you guys laugh. Yeah. We've kind of gone a new. Well, I would. I, I need to stop claiming stuff. I want to say it's a, it's a kind of a style that I've never seen. Oh. Uh, because it's really, I mean, not to jump right back in, it's really a conversation. Yes. So picture, it's, it almost, it almost forced you to think we're sitting at a beach or, or somewhere quiet just sure. talking about our experiences. I like it. So it's one person is telling a story and the other person is interrupting. Like this is a banter. I like so I haven't seen too many books like that, but it, it's quite engaging. Yeah. So, I, I mean, like I wrote it, of course, I'm going to say that, yeah. but... This is what I've been told. Right. So, well, I love to read and see yeah. works from African authors. So we're here to promote it and yep. we're here to see. It's coming so soon. Yeah, exactly. Okay, my guests, that is all for this week. Thank you again for joining us on Global Citizens. I'm Florence, do your host, and come back again to the podcast that inspires a borderless mindset around doing something in the world. Catch us at globalcitizenspod.com and everywhere that you find your podcasts. Bye for now.